Hey guys, welcome back to our repair guys. In today's video guys, we'll show you how to uh, change phone brakes on to your Sienna phone brake parts. So stay with us and we'll show you how to replace them and what it needs to be done. We have more than 200 videos taking the whole car apart. So if you need anything, just let us know and we'll try to make a video. So let's start on it now. First thing I will recommend before jacking the car up is to break, uh, to break the nuts loose. Okay, uh, but don't take them off all the way. Just you have to make sure that they're loose have the emergency brake on, put uh, tire chocks on both sides of each tire, rear tires, and then we can proceed with jacking the car up. So now all we have to do, jack the front end up. Okay, and you have to use a jack stand. If you don't have a jack stand, I wouldn't recommend the job, but there is always a way to do that safer, and I'll show you how. Just don't do what we do. Okay, you can see it's uh, off the ground now, so we can go ahead actually and remove all the lug nuts. Okay, last one now. And we are to the brakes right here now. In our case, we'll put the tire, the wheel of the vehicle with the wood block. That way, if it falls, it's going to drop all the way on the wheel and it's not going to kill you but do not do that i would recommend just getting professional jack stands okay like the ones that we have here but unfortunately ours are on this vehicle now now every time that you put brake pads okay you have to either have your uh, disc roller turned which means that they cut the top layer off so it's not that shiny you don't have little grooves and also they will make it uh, they will make it uh, nice and even because you can see we have a few high spots and that will cause vibrations so we either put new rollers or you have those cut usually there is a minimum thickness stamped on the roller that you can you cannot exceed so we'll show you that in a second so now on the back side we're going to remove the bolts and uh, right here you have to hold them with a wrench as well on this side because otherwise that glide will start turning and uh, those glides are removable so you can remove and grease them, inspect them especially if you live in a state that has more snow, rain here in California we don't get any of that there is one more on the other side Okay, just like that. Now, it's important when you remove the caliper not to let it hang on the brake line. You have to pull it and put it on something or tie it to the strut here. In our case, we'll pull it and we'll put it on the bucket. Okay, so it doesn't have any pressure on the brake line. You can see it just like that. And we'll proceed with the next step. Now, we have to remove that spring and the one on the bottom as well. And we can pull the parts out. Okay, perfect. That's the outside and the inside one now as well. Amazing. So next, in order to remove the roller, we'll need a big 17 millimeter wrench. Okay, and there is uh, two bolts that we'll need to remove and that will be the bracket that holds the brake caliper. That bracket needs to come out so we can pull uh, the disc roller out of the way. If you turn the steering wheel to the right, if you're on the right side of the vehicle, it will be easier to, uh, to get to the bolt. Okay, it's this one here and the one on the bottom. Once you usually get them loose, they go by hand pretty easy. Okay, one is out. And now the second one. After that, that roller has some rust deposit, so we'll spray. Uh, we'll spray some penetrating oil and we'll start tapping on it gently. Now that penetrating oil is really good because it's going to break that rust loose and uh, later you can use a little bit of sandpaper once you remove the roller clean all that rust so you don't have any rust in the way and apply a little bit of a uh, little bit of brake grease as well maybe there.
Okay, we got a rubber hammer, so it doesn't crack the roller. And if it's too tight, we can actually get two bolts, okay, and screw them right here, if it doesn't come off. So if the roller doesn't come off, just get two bolts, okay, that fit that thread. And now, you need to start screwing one, then the other one, and alternate a little bit at a time. Okay, and the roller came out, now we need to get it loose. Okay, just like that. You can see later, we can clean that with the uh, sandpaper here a little bit. So now, we have to compress the pistons in the caliper. That way we can install the new parts because there will be thicker parts. And you can see this one has two cylinders. So how you do that? There is a special tool that you can do for a two cylinder, but we're going to attempt to do it with a single a single piston tool. And we'll see if that works. Uh, we wouldn't recommend it, we'll recommend to have the correct tool, but just for the video guys, just for fun, we'll see if it works. And what else we need to do? The front caliper pistons, usually they just go in. If it's on the rear wheel, you have to turn them clockwise. And when you turn them clockwise, you have to clean all that so you don't have any any rust or dust in the in the seal. So we'll just uh, go ahead and actually clean them just a little bit because uh, when that goes all the way in, the seal will contact with that uh, that surface area, and if you have sand, it can cause uh, leaks. So we will use rust penetrating spray. Okay, we'll spray a little bit there on the pistons. And after that, we'll just clean around really good. Do not soak it in, just on the towel. Okay, you can see how shiny it gets, how good it cleans everything, just not to have any sand there. We'll clean both of them, and after that, We'll use a little bit of white lithium grease so we can cover the area a little bit with a... Okay, ours is almost empty, just a little bit. All the tools and parts again that, is, that we use guys will be listed in the description of the video for your convenience. Perfect. Now, the tool, what we are going to do. Okay, we'll use that tool here and we need to use that plate on top of it, that's how we will do it, in our case. We'll use a big, the biggest attachment that you have in the settings here. It just attaches to the top. And we have that metal plate. The metal plate, we'll put it so it can compress both pistons at the same time. Again, I recommend having the correct tools, but just for fun, we'll see if it works. Okay, now we need to get it tight to the point that this plate will not move. Now, we're going to hold this plate Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and start turning actually counterclockwise And check out how it compresses both pistons at the same time Okay, that's it right there, that should be enough so you can see, they went in with no problem. So it's doable even with that too. Both of them are aligning, everything's good. You have to stand till the end to see what we need to do to make sure that your brakes work good. So we'll get some uh, sandpaper now. We need to send the hub where the uh, brake disc roller contacts the hub. Okay, you can see all the dust coming off, rust. So all that will need to be nice and clean. So the new roller or the roller that you just have turned, it's going to contact the hub really good. Okay, just like that. So we got uh, both rollers cut. We don't need to replace ours because they're still pretty thick. Uh, they meet the minimum requirements. So we'll go ahead, put everything together and uh, 
we'll see how the brakes work now. With the rust penetrating spray, we're going to clean the glides. Uh, I would recommend even to get a brake kit with, with the new glides, they're replaceable, but ours are pretty good. We don't have any rust here, so uh, when you clean them, those things are like brand new. And what just happened guys, we went to the parts store to pick up the brake pads. They were supposed to be delivered at noon and they delivered their own ones. So in our case, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and install the old ones until we get the new ones. So we will apply just a little bit of grease now. Brake grease, you can find it in the description of the video below on the glides now. And also on the brake pads, okay, uh, you can get the new shims as well. If you're replacing them, uh, I'll definitely recommend going that way. And where uh, the brake caliper contacts the brake pad, we will apply a very, very thin layer of brake grease. That way we'll have nice quiet brakes and no rattling. But just imagine, again, you have to be super, super thin because otherwise you have dust accumulating there. Okay, perfect, just like that. So we will install the brake roller, it just goes in. <laughs> now that we clean everything from the rust, you can see how good that thing fits. It even comes loose. So now, all we have to do, install that bracket that holds the brake caliper. It has two bolts. Uh, we do not know the torque specs for this one, to be honest with you. So, uh, what we will have to do, uh, we will get it tight. Usually, if you have experience, you know how much to get it tight, but Check for the torque specs online and we will, if we find them, we will post them in the description of the video below so you can check it out yourself. Okay, now let's go ahead and catch that bolt now. Okay, I'm just not yet there yet. Okay, we installed the top and the bottom one. And after that, we'll get them tight. Uh, do not get them tight before you install both of them. So now, with the same 17 millimeter socket, we'll get both of them tight and then recheck them one more time to make sure that everything's good. Okay, perfect. Okay, this one as well. And now we need to install the brake pads. Imagine they're brand new, okay, that's the only difference. Okay, we need to push them in because it's spring-loaded glides. Okay, I like that. And we need to install the inner one as well. Okay, the inner one is all the way in. Now we need to break, uh, get the brake caliper, but before that, I almost forgot, we need to install those uh, spring-loaded retainers there, okay. Like that, and after that we need to place the brake caliper on top, and there is something very important we should do towards the end. Now, you need to install the two bolts. And we will need to get this tight as well. Okay, perfect. And now the bottom one. Okay, great. Recheck them again to make sure everything's good. Okay, and now to the most important part of the vehicle. Now we have to go inside the vehicle and hit the brake at least 20-30 times all the way down. Okay, by doing that 
what will happen actually actually okay the brake uh, the distance between the brake pads and the, uh, the roller will be eliminated and that way the brakes will work immediately okay check it out now so that way you will not have any play do that until you don't have any play because otherwise if you start the car and you don't do that you will not have brakes a few times that uh, when you press the brake pedal and that could be very dangerous so we we'll always recommend doing that always have one person inside and test the brakes that they work before we put the wheel on so what we have to do next just install the wheel get the lug nuts tied we we'll have the video for the torque spec so you can check it out on the channel we will be uploaded soon so before you drive it, have the emergency brake on, test the brakes, that's very important, before even putting in drive or reverse. And that's how you replace the front brake pads on Toyota Sienna Guys Generation 2011-2018. to So thank you for watching, see you guys next time.